Hello folks, this is ADAC47 and uh, this is the first of a two-part video showing you how to take images smaller than your screen and increase them in either the vertical or horizontal dimension to fill as much space as possible with respect to your screen. And then take care of some of the uh, problems that occur when you do that. Because when you take a small image and make it larger, you're going to get pixelization, you're going to get jags in it because the native resolution of the picture isn't the same as your screen. It's less than that. And so in the process of enlarging it, you get some noise. We're going to show you how to fix that using a pretty extreme case. So I've got two photos here, one of a KI-43 Oscar, the other of a uh, Japanese fighter pilot, an ace on World War II, Sadaki Akamatsu. And each has its own problems. This K-143 is very small and we need to make it be able to be full screen. And uh, in the case of the fighter pilot, it's also smaller than my vertical extent, which is 1440 pixels. Uh, but it also has, in addition to that, it has some uh, newspaper print stuff going on in terms of the herringbone or dotted pattern that you see. So uh, it turns out that the solution for the pixels and the solution for that are the same solution. It's to apply a high frequency filter uh, a blur basically, and uh, that takes care of the pixelization that occurs when you, I'll show that to you in just a second. And it also takes care of this kind of comic book like dot character of scanning in a photograph from a newspaper or magazine. Okay, so let's start with the toughest case first. This uh, K143 Oscar, KI43 Oscar, sorry, uh, is very tiny, and the first thing you should do before trying to enlarge this and use it, you should see if there's a, a better or larger version on the internet. And you can do that using what's called a reverse image search in Google. Um, it basically, you give it the photo to look at and it searches for every instance uh, on the internet of that photo. And it displays them in a list along with their dimensions, their pixels. So you can find a, a, often find a larger picture. I've done that for this, and out of the 34 hits, there weren't very many for it. None of them were any larger than this one. So we're just stuck with this size. So how do we deal with that? Well, let's take uh, the photo into Photoshop. Things are a little sluggish on my machine when I'm running this QuickTime recorder at the same time. Anyway, there's the picture in Photoshop and uh, we can make it fill the available real estate. Uh, so it's going to look something more like that on the screen. You can already see problems with pixelization, but if we zoom in one level, we'll get a better idea of what's going to look like on the screen. And the answer is not very good. Go on one more. And uh, let me switch to a mode where I can have a pointer. Actually, this is better. Um, you can see here very heavy pixelization, the jags created by the enlargement process that are not apparent in the original photo. And it's small size. So the technique we're going to learn, we'll, we'll filter that out and suppress it. Uh, the downside is it will create a slightly blurry quality. The other thing you see going on here, besides the jags, let me zoom in one more level. You see these uh, phantom effects out here. This is, uh, these are artifacts of JPEG compression, of taking JPEG compression, sorry of taking a high resolution image that hasn't been compressed and subjecting it to compression. And particularly if people resave the same JPEG over and over again, after editing it, you will get these kind of fringe effects, what I call fringes or phantom edges. And the good news is that the very same thing that will take care of the pixelization, these jags we're seeing in the contours of the aircraft, will also take care of the fringe. So let's see how that works. Uh, all you do, um, well, I guess the first thing we need to do is adjust the size. So we haven't done that. Uh, so let me go back to our original uh, size on this, which is right there. And we're going to go in the um, image section here, click on it, and go down to resize, image size. You can also adjust the background canvas size if you want to put more than one picture on the page or put other things like a caption. But um, we're just going to adjust the image size itself. And that brings up a dialog box where you can adjust the pixels um, for the image. And we want, in this case, since it's in landscape mode, 
okay, we want this to match the width of my screen, or your screen, whatever it is, but in my case it's uh, 2560 pixels. So what I do is I type in here for the width 2560, and it automatically adjusts the height to be 1702, which preserves the same proportions uh, that we have here, whatever that is. Preserves the aspect ratio of the picture. Um, so these two settings are linked. You can set one or the other, but not both. Although there is a way to do that too, but I won't get into that now. Okay, so let's take that. And now, obviously, since it's created this larger image, screen size image, we see the pixelization when it's zoomed in. I'm going to go in another level, really extreme here, to show you what's going to happen when we apply a filter. And here's the filter menu. We're going to go down to Blur, and in particular, Gaussian Blur. And that's going to bring up a dialog box. And by default, I had it set up for three because I checked this out earlier and it turned out that three pixels was pretty good. If we use one, it's not enough. You can still see some jagging and you can still see the fringes out here. And uh, sometimes with photos that aren't nearly as uh, being enlarged as much as this one, you can get by with a half a pixel. But that doesn't do the trick at all. So I found just experimenting that, you know, if you go out here to four or five, obviously it's way too blurry. Uh, but at three, basically got the best compromise I could get, three pixels. Now, I know it looks bad, but we're zoomed way in. So let's go back to the original setting. That's what we've got. And it certainly looks better than the uh, version. Uh, let's take the filter away and we'll compare. There is without it. I just did an undo command, basically. Uh, command Z, or if you have a PC, it's uh, Control Z in Photoshop. And I'm going to redo it, which is command Y or Z. So that's the comparison back and forth. So it's really, this is the best we can do with this tiny image. It does look slightly blurred, uh, but sometimes a photo is slightly blurred. So it isn't that out of the ballpark of what we want. And it's going to display pretty nicely on our screen. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to do save as, because I want to save it with a different name to keep my original. I'm going to call it resize. There we go. And we can specify the compression level here. I'm going to pick 8. That's what I normally use unless you really want to keep high resolution uh, images for uh, with, with lots of colors with maximum uh, quality. Okay. So let's take a look at these two together. And what I'm going to do is close this one. Try to open both these at the same time. Hopefully, there we go. So this is the uh, original image here. You can see how tiny it is. It does look very clear, but that's because it's very tiny. And it's got the 600 by um, 399 pixel dimension. So we go to our enlarged one, which is now 2560 in width and 1702. And if I go into full screen mode, that's what it looks like now in my screensaver. And that's acceptable to me, but it's right on the edge. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and get out of here. Actually, we're getting staircasing here, but that's because the full screen mode isn't uh, using the uh, anti-aliasing properly. Um, so let's escape. Well, that's because it, I'm sorry, that. That was not the reason. It's because I was in play mode and it was cycling back and forth between the two photos and we were looking at the bad one. Um, so if we go to full screen here and don't let it advance by pausing, that's what we got, what we have to live with. And it looks pretty good. Okay. So done with this. We've saved it and uh, we can move on. Okay. And that leaves our friend uh, Sadaki uh, Akamatsu. Uh, we would like to sh show the same technique used here. So let's go ahead and uh, put that photo in Photoshop. And I apologize for how sluggish the uh, system is, but that happens when you run this recording software. It takes a lot of CPU. And so here we are. And again, if we zoom in and take a look, we see the problem we have. And we're going to apply a one-pixel um, uh, 
Well, actually, we need to resize first, of course. So let me do that. Apologize. So we'll resize image size to be, uh, in this case, it's a portrait, uh, not a landscape orientation, portrait orientation. So we want to adjust the height to match my screen height, which is 1440, and that makes the width 700 of the result. And there we are. Okay. But again, uh, zooming in, we can see what we're dealing with. So now let's apply uh, a filter. Again, the Gaussian blur is my preference. And that's the three pixel blur that we are using for that earlier picture, but we don't really need that much. So let's try to get by with one. Now that's a one pixel blur. And it looks uh, somewhat blurry, but remember, we're zoomed way in here. So let's go back out and that looks pretty good. And for comparison, here's the original. Okay, very grainy. And here's the filter one. Let's zoom in a level, just one. That's closer to what it's gonna look like on the screen. And let's undo our filter. Here's the original. And there is the filter version, which is what we're gonna keep. And uh, you can go ahead and do some touch up here with the spot hinting tool. I have another uh, video on this in my playlist, uh, how to do uh, in my YouTube channel. And so we've got some scratches here we can get rid of um, and some spots you can retouch. Uh, so that would be the last stage. I'm not going to bother here because I've already done it, in fact. And so we won't save this. So that's... Uh, and quickly, that's the way to um, enlarge a picture to full screen and have it look pretty good by smoothing the jags and the edges that come out or getting rid of dots if it was scanned from newsprint. And um, now you'll be able to watch it on your screensaver uh, in this full screen and it should look pretty decent. That's it for now. Look forward to part two. It will give greater detail. Thank you. ADAC over now.